So I love Ableton because you can MIDI control the whole thing and it's really useful. But what if you don't have Ableton and you want to use Logic? So in this video, I'm going to be using the SPDSX to control it, but you don't need that. You just need any MIDI controller that you like. If you are using the SPDSX to do this, then just make sure that you have the audio MIDI driver, which is completely free. All you have to do is Google the words SPDSX driver, go to the first link here, which is the Roland support page, wait for it to load, a thousand years. That's my internet. That's not Roland. That's my internet. You'll get to this page and then you just want to scroll down until you see the operating system you're working with. So if you're working on Windows, then I'll have a lot of questions because Logic isn't on Windows. But if you're working on Mac, then you just scroll down until you see the USB driver version, whichever one it is for Mac. If you're running the latest software of Mac, then it'll be the the first Mac driver you see. If it's any later, it'll be on the list. Once you've downloaded that, like I said, completely free, you will need to restart your Mac, but then you'll just need to go to the SPDSX, hitting the buttons menu, down to setup, down to option, and then down to USB mode, where you can use the plus and minus buttons to change that from wave manager or audio slash MIDI. Then you just plug in the SPDSX via USB to a laptop and you're good to go. If you have an audio interface, then you can use the five pin MIDI output from the SX and into a laptop. In this video, I'm going to be using the USB B cable because that's probably what most of us have. But either way, as long as you can get MIDI out of it and into your laptop, you're good to go. Once you're there, once you've got the drivers and the SX is set up with the, well, the drivers, you've plugged it in, it's all turned on. The next step is just open up a blank logic project like this. Now what I'm going to control is the mute button, the record button, play button, stop button, and then go to the next marker and go to the previous marker. All of those things. Very similarly to what I'd want to use on Ableton, just minus the record, because I don't tend to record on Ableton, but I feel like that's just a good thing to have on Logic. You know what I mean? Anyway, this is how to do it. So where you want to go is into Logic Pro at the top, into Control Surfaces, and then Controller Assignments, and you'll get this window up here. Now the button we're looking for is the one in the bottom right that says Learn Mode. So I'm going to use the Play and the Stop, and if you've seen my SPDSX before, you know it's color-coded to perfection. So I'm just going to go Play here, where in pink it says Play, in pink it says Stop, and then Previous, Next for the markers. Probably going to go Record up here, and then like Mute down here. Doesn't really matter, I just thought I'd let you know. But with that, let's go for the play button. So if I go on learn mode and then just click on play, you'll now see that it says play, I'm on learn mode, so I'm just gonna hit the SPDSX, job done. And now I want to stop it, so I'm just gonna hit the learn mode again, go to stop by pressing on the stop button. As you can see, the labels change to stop, hit the SPDSX, and there we go, that's play and stop. So I'm just gonna check that, play, stop, stop again to go back to the beginning. Oh, it's beautiful. So there's those two. Next, I'm gonna go record, which I'm gonna go in the top right of the SPDSX. You put it wherever you want. Again, learn mode, I'm just gonna hit record. It turns to record, hit the SPDSX, hit stop to stop record. Oh, it's getting great. So what did I say? I said play, stop, record. Oh yeah, markers and then the mute. Okay, so this is where it changes slightly because we're gonna to go to a different menu because the next few buttons, we're toggling them on and off. Whereas play, stop and record, you pretty much just hit it once and you're good to go. So I'm gonna exit out of this menu. I'm gonna delete those recordings. I'm gonna go, ooh, where should I go? I'm gonna go the markers next. Let's do markers. So I wanna skip between certain markers. So the first thing is we need to create them. So I'm gonna use the little drop down menu here. As we can see, marker. Then I'm just gonna rename that by double clicking to go into like intro. I need to turn my keyboard on. Intro. Uh, let's just go like verse here and then chorus here. Obviously, if you had a full song, then you'd mark up this whole thing. But for now, I'll just use those three. So now what we want to do, now that we have our markers, is go to Logic Pro, Key Commands, Edit Assignments. And this is usually where you find all of your shortcuts on your keyboard, because we're essentially going to add to those with our MIDI controller, in this case, the FPDSX. So I'm going to search for marker, because that's what we want to adjust. And then if we scroll up a little bit, we'll find go to previous marker, go to next marker. Now, if you go down, you can actually assign it to a specific marker. So every time you hit a pad, it will go to that one. I don't want to do that. I want to have the flexibility of moving back and forth. So if I go previous, learn new assignment in the bottom right until that's blue, and then hit the pad. There we go. And then same thing for next, learn new assignment, there we go. Just check that's worked by hitting it. Stunning. Play from the chorus. Go back to the verse. Go back to the intro. Stop. Now it's starting to get quite fun. The last thing I want to assign, I think, did I do them all? 
is mute. And this is the same with solo or record arm or anything like that. I'm just using mute because it can be quite helpful. So toggle channel strip mute is the one we want because that essentially means when we are on a selected channel, that is the channel that's going to mute. You can obviously assign one of these pads to move channels across. I'm not going to in this video, but this is, this is how you do it. So toggle channel strip mute. Again, learn the assignment, hit the pad. There we go. And then I'm going to check in the bottom right on that selected channel strip, mute, 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 mute. And there we go. That's assigned that channel, that mute button. So now if I close out of this, our logic project should have play, stop, next marker, previous marker. I didn't hit it hard enough. Record and then mute, unmute. So the way I think about it, is if it's a button that needs toggling, then you're gonna to go to key commands. If it's sort of like a one press button, like the play button, the stop button, that's gonna be in controller assignments. But generally, I kind of search for it in the key commands and then I can find it. And if it's not in there, then I know it's in the other one and it's there. But it now means that you can probably use Logic as a backing track rig if you don't want to get Ableton or you want to try it, which that in itself is pretty amazing. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section down below. I'm Harry, this is Drum Electric, and I hope you have a fantastic day.